This is chapter 5 loops programming exercise 16. Find the factors of an integer. Write a program that reads an integer and display all its smallest factors in an increasing order. For example, if the input integer is 120, the output should be as follow. So 2, 2, 2, 3, 5. And the reason for that is because 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24, and 24 times 5 is 120. So these are all the factors of 120 displayed in increasing order. So how do we do it? How do we solve it? So let's say let's say we're given the number 120. Now we're going to ask ourselves, we're going to start from the smallest possible number that could go into 120. And of course you might say, okay, that's 1. 1 could go into 120 evenly, right? But we're going to have to ignore 1. Because, of course, 1 could go into any number that's 1 and greater. And that's and 1 isn't really considered a factor, the smallest possible factor of uh, 120 in this case. In this case, it will be 2. 2 will be the minimum. So we're going to start by start with the smallest possible number, and that being 2. And we're going to ask ourselves, is 2, does it uh, go into 120 evenly? Uh, and if it does, then it is a factor of 120. And if it doesn't, then it's not. And we increment 2 by 1. So let's take a look at it visually. We're at, we have 120 and we try to divide by 2. And it does go into 120 evenly. And uh, the result is 60. So we take 60 and we divide by 2. And once again, it does go in evenly and the result is 30. Take 30, divide by 2, and it goes in evenly. The result is 15. We take 15 and we divide by 2 and it doesn't go in evenly. The remainder is a fraction, right? So 2 does not go into uh, 15 evenly. So now we got 2, 2, 2, which is exactly what is seen here, 2, 2, 2. So now that we know that, uh, we know that 2 doesn't go into 15 evenly, we increment or increase 2 by 1 and we get 3. And then we try that again. Does 3 go into 15 evenly? Yes, it does. Results 5. We try that number again. Does 3 go into 5 evenly? No, it doesn't. Result is also a fraction. And we increase 3 by 1 and try to divide 5 by 4 and it doesn't work. Try it again. Increase 4 by 1 and try to divide 5 by 5 and that works. Now the result is we just get 1 and that's it. We don't have to do anything from there after we get 1 as the remainder. So we now have 2, 2, 2, 3, and 5. These are all the number that goes into 120 evenly and in increasing order. All right, so let's try to code that. Now we have our scanner, and we're going to ask the user uh, to enter a number. And let's store that number in a short value, short number equals input dot next short. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use a loop to try to do what we did here, which is to constantly go into this number that we're given and to see if it comes out evenly. And what I see is that the best type of loop to use in this case will be a while loop. So while Right, while number does not equals one. So that will be our base case. Once number reaches one, right, then we stop. Once it reaches one, which is means it can't be divided by anything else beside one, then we stop. We don't have to find any more factors. There are no more factors to go into one. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a check. Let's say, hey, uh, does x number go into this number that you give us? So in this case, this number, let's call it factor. And we're going to start it at 2 and not at 1, like I said before, because we know that 1 will go into any other, any number that's 1 and greater. So we're going to start with 2. Now, what we, what we have here is basically uh, a check. We're gonna say, hey, 
actually, before we do a while loop, we have to do one more check. If a uh, number is less than or equals to one, then actually, you know what? I should do greater than one, then we do a while loop. Else, system.out.print, else if a uh, number equals one, the only factors of number is oops is one. So let's try to get a visual of that, and then we have one more else else uh, system dot out dot print. Let's do a print line. And this is to satisfy all cases, right? So what if the user enter one? Well, if the user enter one, then the only factors of one is one, and we're going to display that. And if user any, enter anything else that's less than one, well, then we'll just say there are no factors for the number. Okay. And let's give that a try. So let's run that. We enter zero, and there are no factors for zero, right? Because what what's going to go into zero? What's going to divide zero? Zero divided by zero, it's it's not a number. Negative one. Well, there are no factors for negative one. Now here's the other case. What if we do negative one twenty? Well, there is factors for negative one twenty. But uh, we're in this case we're solving for positive numbers only. So let's solve for positive numbers only, and then we'll tackle that. So what we could do is we could do an or case, or number equals zero. So there are many cases that you have to look out for. In this case, uh, positive only. If number is greater than one, then we solve it, and we could solve for the negative right after we solve for the positive. So let's say we have our factor. If this number here, um, if number is, well, if we divide it by factor and the result is, actually, you know what? I'll use mod. Mod it by factor and result equals zero, then that's good. And what we have is we'll display we'll display factor because it goes in nicely and factor plus and comma all right we're gonna follow what they have here right two commas a little space here two comma all the way to five so follow that and we gotta make sure now the next thing we want to do is to change the number number divided by equal divided by equal to so now that we already found the first factor we want to decrease the number from now let's say uh originally 120 so if 2 goes into 120 the next number we have to check is 60 so now we have to divide that to actually reflect that number so now that is 60 uh we're good so let's say the else, else case else case is if number doesn't go into, I mean, if factor doesn't evenly go into number, then we'll increase factor by one, right? So once again, we have the case. If it keeps going in, that's good. Divide the number, get the next number, try again. If it doesn't uh, go in evenly, then increment it by one. And that's exactly what we have here. If it goes in, that's good. Uh, get the next number and try again. If it doesn't go in, increase it by one. So let's take a look at it for now and let's see if this works, if there are any issues with this. So we have 120 and then bam. So what we have here is 2, 2, 2, 3, 7, and then negative 3. Well, what's going on? Why do we have a negative 3? So uh, what we get here 
is let's see uh, we have 2 divided by 2 2 3 7 so else factor plus plus so there's something wrong with the logic and what is wrong is basically let's take a look all right so we enter 120 uh, 120 and it's constantly being divided by 2 oops I made the mistake right there uh, I don't want to constantly divide by 2 divide by factor okay there we go all right so that was my mistake that was a logical error on my part and let's try again and there we go all right now we got 120 so that is good all right so basically we got 120 120 is definitely greater than 1 so it goes into this while loop here right it ignores these other cases because this already checks out so it goes into the while loop and say hey 120 does not equal 1 so what I'm going to do is do another check uh, if I do 120 modded by factor which starts off as 2 if it equals 0 then print out the first factor which is 2 all right after I print out the first factor 120 uh, modded by 2 now I'll, I want the next number which is 120 divided by 2 which is 60 so now I state that number now equals 60 or whatever the result of it after we divide it by the factor now we keep doing this until it no longer can be divisible by 2 in this case we increment it to uh, by 1 to 3 and it goes in once and it doesn't go in again then we increment it it goes it doesn't go in we increment again and 5 and at that point where 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 uh, times 3 is 24 times 5 is 120 and 120 uh, whatever result left after number number is now 1 it does not need to continue this while loop all right so let's clean this up let's get rid of this comma here and we'll do a little check uh, we will say Huh. We'll just do. Uh, if we could say if number, let's see, if it reaches the when it reaches the five, uh, so number modified by divided by factor does not equals one all right then display this so the check is basically to see uh, if it's the, if it's the last number or not if it's the last number which means uh, five divided by five result is one then we do a period all right so let's try that again two comma two comma two comma three comma five all right so that is good uh and let's do a check um all right so uh, we satisfy for all cases for any number that's greater than one so two so uh, we could say the oops system of the print line the factors for uh, let's say number r is slash r cases one or more numbers so it works for two, works for any number greater than two. I mean, uh, two or greater uh, factors for three is slash r is three. Let's try that with four. Factors for four is r two comma two. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, and let's do something like 256. The factors for 256 is two times two. So two should be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two to the eighth power, correct. All right. So uh back to the issue from getting what if we do negative 256 well in this case i never solve for that right i say only positive numbers or if you're equal to one or zero then say hey 
none, nothing, nada, right? Uh, in this case, negative number is also a number, and there are factors for negative numbers. So, what we do is we could solve that uh, simply by saying something like this, right? Uh, we'll completely, we'll just get rid of this right here. Actually, we could leave it in case there are other possibilities that we haven't thought of yet. But we'll just do a little if case right here. If a uh, number happens to be less than zero, what we're going to do is simply system.out.print uh, display the display a negative one comma space and we're going to uh, divide the number by negative one okay so let's try that again um, enter a number let's say negative 256 the factors for negative 256 will say negative one times two times two times two and that's all the way so that so you could say something like that, right? So it depends on what you're asked. So two to the eighth power is 256 times negative one makes it a negative 256. Okay, but that's just a simple fix. Really depends on what you're asked, what you're being requested, and then you answer from there. And that'll be pretty much it for this exercise.